Well, what we've seen so far relating to scopes is something that's uh, the behavior of JavaScript and it has its rules. But if you think about it, it kind of seems quite obvious once you realize that uh, functions create scopes, right? So it's quite obvious to figure out what's going on when uh, a variable is used depending on where the scope is. But if you notice, all the examples had one common characteristic, which is that all the variables that were used were properly declared with the var keyword. There was never a variable that was accessed without declaration. Now, when the variables are properly declared and then they're used, whatever we've learned so far applies just fine and you know it behaves exactly like you would expect it to. But then things kind of start to deviate when you use variables without declaring them. We looked at a previous video where we said that if we are doing a read operation on an undeclared variable, it's going to result in an error. But if you do a write operation on an undeclared variable, it's going to actually create that variable. With the knowledge of scopes and the scope chain that we have learned so far, let's revisit that concept and see how it works with the kind of scope look lookup that we've, uh, we've looked so far. So let's start with this example of uh, a var a equals 10, which is at the global scope. And now I'm going to create a function called myfn, and it is going to create a new variable inside the function var b, and it's going to assign the value a to it. And then I'm going to do console.log of b. And again, this should print the b, which is inside the scope. It's fairly obvious. But now here's where I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use a variable which I haven't declared. So let's say I do console.log of c. There is no var c anywhere in this code. And uh, I'm trying to do a read operation on a variable that hasn't been declared. OK, so now let's uh, call the function my fn and uh, now the question is what gets printed on the console well let's set up the scope chain for this now we have uh, two passes one is to play the role of the compiler which accumulates all the bars and the second pass is the is to play the role of the interpreter which executes the code so let's play the role of the compiler here now compiler starts with line one it looks at var a so it creates a on the global scope Next, it looks at this function. It creates the myfn variable on the global scope. And now it examines this function. And now you have a var b inside. So it creates b in the myfn scope. And there are no variable declarations in these two lines. It's just accessing the variables. And now it comes to line 9. There's no variable declaration here. So this is our scope chain. Now the compiler is done, and now the interpreter runs. Now the interpreter looks at the first line, it's going to look at this part, like we've talked about, a equals 10, it's going to examine the global scope to see if there's a variable called a. Now it finds it and it uses it. And now this is a function declaration, the interpreter has nothing to do with it for now. Now here is a function execution, it's executing a function called myfn. Now again it looks at the global scope and says, hey, do you have a variable called myfn? There is a variable called myfn which is a function, so it gets it and it executes it. Now we are in line 4. Line 4, again the interpreter looks at this part, b equals a. Now it looks to the myfn scope to get b, it says do you have b? You get b. Now it checks for a as well, it says hey myfn scope, do you have a? Myfn scope does not have it, so it looks one level up and it looks at the global scope. Say hey global scope, do you have variable a? Global scope says yes and the value is 10 now, so it uses the value 10 and uh, it assigns that to b. Now b contains the value 10. Now here it does console.log of b. Of course it looks at console, goes all the way up to the global scope. I'm not going to repeat that, but now it has to print b, right? It's reading b. It says, hey, my fn scope, do you have b? Now there is a variable b inside my fn scope, so it's going to use that and it's going to print the value 10. Now it's going to come to line 6. Now line 6 does console.log of c. Now let's say it looks up console, it's happy, and now it wants to look up C. It says, hey, myfn, do you have a variable with the name C? The myfn says, no, in the scope, there is no variable with the name C. Now it goes up to the global scope and says, hey, global scope, do you have a variable with the name C? Now the global scope says no. Now what the interpreter does is, since this is a read operation and it is not able to find a variable, it doesn't know what to read from. So it is going to throw an error. Okay, so this is where an error is thrown. So it, lo it goes all the way to the global scope to see if there is any variable. And even after it reaches the global scope, if there is no variable that's available in the global scope, it's trying to read a variable. It cannot find the variable to read from, so it's going to throw an error. 
Now here is where it's different if you were to write to it. Okay, let's say instead of reading, instead of using a read operation, let's say I have a write operation. Let's say I have a C equals 100. Okay, now this is a write operation on C. You're assigning the value 100 to C. You're writing to C. Now it's the same flow again. And let's say we come to line six and now you're writing to C. And now the interpreter says, hey, my FN scope, do you have a variable with C? My FN scope says no. Then it goes to the global scope and checks if there is a variable with the name C. The global scope says no. But now what happens is since it's a write, it does not give an error. Okay, it says, I don't have to read from it. I'm writing to it. So if the variable does not exist, let me actually create one. Maybe the developer needs this to be created. So the interpreter assumes the need for this variable to exist. And now it creates it. The question is, which scope does it create it in? Now, at this point of time, the interpreter has checked all the way up to the global scope. And, you know, it's looking at the global scope now. So when the interpreter creates the variable, the name C, it actually creates it in the global scope. So this line, line six, actually creates the variable C in the global scope. It doesn't create it in the myfn scope, even though the line that causes the variable to be created is inside the myfn scope, okay? This happened because you didn't have a var here. Just suppose you had a var here, what would have happened is this would have been something that the compiler would have looked at and C would have been in the myfn scope. But since you did not have a var here, the first pass, the compiler pass, easily skipped through this, right? It didn't even look at line six. And the interpreter checks all the way to the global scope to see if there is a variable with the name C. And since it doesn't find it, it actually creates a variable C in the global scope which is all kinds of bad. You remember how many times I've told you in this course that global variables are bad. But here it turns out JavaScript has this default behavior of you know looking at variables which aren't declared. And if it's a write operation, it actually creates variables in the global scope. So yes, JavaScript is particularly sensitive to global variables because you load a bunch of scripts in the same namespace in a window. So global variables are bad in any language, but it's especially bad in JavaScript. And to add to that, JavaScript has this weird behavior where if you use a variable without declaring and you do a write operation on the variable, you actually end up creating the variable in the global scope. I'm going to talk about uh, how to prevent this from happening a bit later, but remember that this does happen. So moral of the story, always use wars to declare your variables.